term Bruna Bertucci. She is professor at the University of Perugia and uh, also an associate of the INFN, where she is a representative uh, here in ASI, uh, in INFN representative in the uh, ASI uh, SDC. Okay, so I have the huge responsibility to let you have lunch in time. <laughs> but we are, we are already late, so don't blame on me. <laughs> Let me some please. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I was uh, quite puzzled uh, in uh, preparing this talk because uh, open data means a lot of things, and uh, in general, uh, when we speak about open and science, my first uh, job is science, uh, we always think to a very nice marriage, the ideal marriage, because uh, the enlarged access to data makes a lot. Uh, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so it's the ideal one. The divorce is as well. <laughs> I, I'm married since 25 years, so, so for me, marriage is ideal. <laughs> I'm still an uh, ideal person. And uh, the, of course, we can always uh, agree that these uh, increases rates of discovery, benefits uh, because it uh, allows uh, to have research data preserved over time can uh, enhance interdisciplinary research, uh, widespread of knowledge and education, and advances, and we can put many dots. And as uh, was mentioned yesterday, maximizes return for public investment, because if we build an experiment, the taxpayer needs to know what we do with it. But the challenges are different in different communities. And I'm coming from a peculiar community that is really mixing space, ground, and everything. And uh, my background community is the INFN, and the INFN mission is the National Physic, uh, Nuclear Physics Institute in Italy, is to study the cons fundamental constituents of matter and the laws that govern them uh, with uh, different kind of uh, activities. The business core is particle physics, fundamental interaction and accelerators, but nevertheless, uh, the universe is the most powerful accelerator, so there's astroparticle physics, and then nuclear physics, theoretical physics, and technology. I mean, technology that means building detectors, but also uh, putting software infrastructure to analyze the data and to open the data to the public. And uh, this is uh, the kind of uh, overview of the activities that are carried in international lamps, so open international, in uh, national lamps of nation, uh, international interest, Gravitational Wave Observatory, just not to speak only of AMS. And of course, uh, if I have to take example of uh, uh, observatories in the astroparticle physics uh, meaning, we have underground, we have deserts with the OSHA project, we have undersea um, for neutrino astronomy, we, have, uh, we start the business of uh, astronomical telescopes, uh, with participation in MAGIC, but now also for the CTA project and space. And since nobody was quoting this experiment, I just put uh, AMS as an example. But of course, uh, INFN is uh, involved in uh, Fermi, Pamela, with the support of space agents, Italian space agency, with international collaboration, and so on and so forth. So uh, I'm coming from a quite uh, uh, strange community. Let's call it high energy physics. And in high energy physics, uh, Data sharing is, and data management are the issues. And uh, we are speaking of open based on uh, some web technology. And in fact, the web technologies was uh, uh, just a young baby in the 90s at CERN. So was coming from the request of data sharing and open access between the scientific community of documents and information. And uh, okay, this was uh, the original uh, printout. Uh, I mean, the browser was not really nice, but um, this was my youth, so I'm uh, proud of it. But uh, the real problem is that when you are uh, handling uh, petabytes of data, of data per day, as in LHC experiment, and you have to move uh, this uh, something like uh, 100 petabytes accessed by 110 kilo people, uh, of course, uh, you concentrate on data exploitation and a bit less on open data access, because uh, this data, I mean, you don't want to duplicate. And uh, this was bringing uh, to a worldwide effort on grid computing 
that uh, and uh, the LHC computing grid the paradigm was the one used uh, and uh, is being used still uh, to operate this kind of uh, data a global computing uh, computing infrastructure that is eventually evolving uh, to different models since the challenge is increasing i mean we uh, we expect something like a 50 uh, factor 50 of uh, increase of data for the next 10 years and uh, of course, uh, this is peculiar, the amount of data, but the real peculiarity in this field uh, is that uh, we have a large variety of physics results uh, and there's no standard output format. I mean, uh, the great thing in astronomy is the fits. I mean, uh, we have the Vatican uh, library, I mean, uh, that is uh, fits based. I mean, uh, colleagues from ENAF were uh, telling me this and I was really amazed by this. It was and uh, mentioned today, actually. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no but uh, I mean, I was learning this over the summer together with Nani and Smarelia, and I was uh, impressed by this. And uh, it's not only, or, uh, I mean, to be fair with a planetary data system, each, com each community has its own format. But we don't have a standard output also. I mean, we don't, no, not only we don't have a format, but we don't have a standard output because the results of our experiments are so different that you cannot just say, I'm taking a picture of the sky, of the earth, or uh, of the sea. We are just getting particles, so you cannot have a um, standard output. And uh, the growth inside of the international collaboration means that you start to have communities of one, two thousand people, and of course uh, they will develop their data management system. And it's difficult to have, uh, uh, I mean, and this collaboration is on its own but they can share common tools of infrastructure. And this is the good example. And um, the question uh, we, have to, mm, we are asking, data should be open and at which level? And for re what reason and to whom? I mean, these questions in, uh, with different mm, aspects uh, have been touched in different talks today and yesterday. I mean, it means you want to have uh, open data because you want to maximize the scientific results so these data are made for science and should be delivered in the best way possible way to experts. That means that you can test the results you are publishing, you can reproduce the result with a freeze, frozen code, or maybe with a new analysis, produce new measurements out of it. This, uh, in some sense, we call it data preservation for science rotation. And then you have education, general public. You want to have... Uh, new people involved with science in general is part of physics the best portal to enter people to science we can discuss on it but you want to have a hands-on experience with minimum skills so you want to have dissemination and outreach i was uh, really impressed by your uh, presentation about uh, the effort of the astronomical uh, union and uh, master classes or uh, uh, cosmic ray international uh, days uh, are the tools that are commonly used uh, in this community in order to advance <laughs> in this goal. And uh, just to give you an, uh, an example, uh, when uh, we say open data, the data mining for coming to publication, this is the Higgs plot uh, in, uh, in the uh, LHC run, this implies many analytical steps in uh, data uh, analysis. And not speaking of the zero level calibration of the instrumentation. This requires uh, preselection, uh, analysis, final data sample, and on this running different analysis with uh, tests with Monte Carlo. It's a complex process. It's not something that you just take a snapshot. And uh, access uh, to, and you have the final plot. And access to data without the full analysis chain and uh, without the Monte Carlo that validates the chain and without the competencies to understand what you're doing we could be useless for general public, if not dangerous, because then you would claim uh, whatever kind of effect. And this applies to LHC data as a place to MS data. This is the positron access we were uh, discussing uh, transparently yesterday. In order to get this result, uh, you have all the same kind of steps you would need in a particle physics experiment. And uh, just this result is the, needs a deep comprehension of the detector, a deep comprehension of the background, instrumental background, of the, not only of the physics, uh, but also of the 
fine details, and is the result of a statistical analysis. It's not uh, this particle is a positron, this particle is a proton. And uh, again, if you just would give uh, the raw data or even the preselected data to the general public, this would not be transparent. This would be a damage because it would be meaningless. So uh, this kind of question, this question, problems anyhow of open access are coming essentially for data preservation, not only for outreach and science, or science to a more general public, but we have to say that this kind of uh, uh, discussion really started in the high energy physics community less than 10 years ago, and uh, still uh, is on ongoing with many difficulties. Uh, just link uh, to the portal at web. And we can uh, just see that are, uh, we can distinguish different levels for different users. Uh, the easiest way is to provide uh, more documentation. You make a publication, you get more documentation about it. This is not so expensive and could be effective. But you can uh, preserve the data in a simplified format in order to make hands-on, uh, not real uh, progress in science, but just to uh, teach people to come close to science. But of course, this uh, is uh, an effort not too much. And of course, the technical preservation project, namely to open uh, data access for more scientific exploitation of data, this is a real challenge the, from the point of view of money, tools, because if you have to rerun everything, you need the same kind of resources. Okay, so from the producer to the consumer, we are just saying that we have plenty of data, we want to see the consumer what kind of data can get out of it publicly and uh, I've still the means. I just give uh, three selected examples. Since we are uh, in the Italian Space Agency and we are speaking of uh, making data accessible, I will just speak about uh, the experience with the Science Data Center, uh, the, the, the original one, A, so not B, not C, not D, the, the first one, and so the Cosmic Ride database. In fact, uh, uh, this is just uh, a beginning, it's not the end of the project, but what we are trying to do is to make public results from Cosmic Ray experiment close and easily accessible, not because uh, we give the original set of data, but because we give access to different experiments that publish on a different particles, you can select the kind of particle you want, in the, which period, uh, as a function of something, you have the link to the papers, you have the link to, uh, I mean, uh, brief notes, <laughs> and you can extract the graphics, you can make the plot of the positron axis, uh, as given by different experiment, and maybe you can decide to download the graphics, uh, use it for to do your own fit on your model, and so on and so forth. So it's just too easy to access them. It's not a new set of data, but a quick way to access them. Uh, sometimes papers don't contain uh, the, in the supplementary material the table of the data points of the measurements. We get it, we have to do the collaboration. I mean, we are in the collaboration, so we do it. And so this is, uh, and the un underlying database can be used with private access, of course, also to organize preliminary uh, data release within the collaboration. This is, uh, so this is just uh, uh, a tool uh, to better um, get published data. <coughs> Then we are uh, trying to do a space mission orbiter explorer. We were speaking about the radiation environment on, ground, on uh, near Earth. And of course, cosmic ray experiment have triggers that monitor the counting of particles. So uh, what we are trying to set up is a mission orbiter explorer. Given a mission, you have the raw data counts as a function of latitude, longitude, uh, orbital point. Then you can do it as a function of L shell, of magnetic parameters, of cutoff and try to produce, uh, a, let's say, a database out of it. Of course, uh, this as of today are proprietary data on the experiment, but as the experiment is ended, <coughs> this will become public because will not be exploited just by the collaboration. And this could be a service to the world. So just to give an example. And uh, with this, we are just as the two um, um, top of this pyramid. We have publication and data, and we have uh, some uh, uh, user-friendly data representation of the processes data. But uh, the real problem is uh, to go on the bottom of the pyramid, so to have data collection and structured database that you can use to rerun your analysis, not to go on uh, raw data and data sets. And uh, of course, we have uh, 
to be open and to be reusable, you have uh, the third principle. So findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reusability. And this uh, was uh, tried within the Open Access Repository project in INFN. This Open Access Repository project is, uh, in some sense, uh, tries to do the full circle of the Open Access. So you can search for a publication in a, in a database. You get the data from this publication. You can uh, instantiate a virtual machine with the software to run on this data. Then you can uh, do your own analysis, write a new paper. And then you can uh, submit this new paper to the system, uh, insert a DOE, so you have a digital observ um, <coughs> identifier that can it will be will make this product unique in the world, and then you go back in the loop. And this was um, uh, some idea that was uh, implemented uh, now by now something like three years ago, uh, using uh, open source software, open platforms. I mean everything is open, no proprietary software, so you don't have lock-in, and uh, can uh, have automatic ingestion in place from different. Uh, public uh, repository, can have data stored on different facility without uh, more uh, research, can uh, have a different identification authorities, so I can log in as INFN, but somebody else can uh, log in with another uh, certificate. And uh, of course, uh, I will skip this because uh, there are a few minutes left, but there are a lot of functionalities. Just to give uh, an example, you, uh, you search for a data set, you find the data set, you instantiate uh, a virtual machine, you run on this data set. This was an example on, uh, with EUDAT data and uh, machine in Catania. This is an example of a data set of Alice experiment uh, at CERN. And this is, uh, for instance, uh, the connection to the open data portal at CERN, and, uh, and so on and so forth. You can uh, upload your uh, paper, give it uh, a DOE, and uh, will be visible uh, and compliant uh, with all the open access uh, repository standards. Is a DOR data provider, is on open air, as, uh, I mean, as all the flags of a fair project. And um, what I'm uh, glad uh, that this kind of the, of the effort maybe is not being used uh, in high energy physics communities today because it's too complicated. But this is used for a portal in, uh, for a science gateway in Africa. So this open access repository, the challenge is won because we have breast cancer uh, mammography that are shared between uh, hospitals in Africa. Science and uh, something good for uh, health. Last, uh, last item is a challenge in infrastructure because uh, data exploitation is a challenge in energy physics, but also for preservation. We were just looking at the platform for geoscience. And uh, I would like just to give a feeling on operation across cloud solution. The fact is that uh, if you give the data exploitation picture, it's a loop. It's a loop that uh, you have some uh, data, you need to run uh, some code on some, uh, some data, metadata, all information. You have to read this, this code on some machine that can be grid, cloud, HPC, depends on the, what you need. And this uh, will produce your data. And uh, this loop, you would like to have it open. So this loop works uh, both for uh, getting the physics result from the experiment and uh, if you want to get some physics result from the open data experiment. And um, for instance, uh, solutions, open access cloud solutions, are being explored in the um, in infrastructure uh, for um, European program. And uh, for instance, INFN was contributing with the Indigo program. Here, uh, I mean, it's quite complicated. You have uh, the three levels, the infrastructure of a service, as a service, the platform as a service, the service as a service that corresponds to the different levels of, of use, data and uh, hardware, how you organize your hardware and how you allocate resources on your hardware, the platform, how you handle this hardware. So uh, within a Linux system, within uh, infrastructure, 29 seconds is fine, I'm uh, speaking very fast, and so on. But uh, 
what I'm, I mean, it's a very beautiful project. Uh, you can look uh, as all the youth project is on the web. But uh, what I was really proud of while preparing this talk, that one use case was CTA, and uh, the Indigo champion and use case was Lucio Angelo Antonelli of ISDC for CTA. So this is an example. This Indigo tool uh, is not done for uh, the, uh, I mean, was not conceived for uh, the wellness of humanity. It was conceived in order to solve LHC problem. But the use case and the platform that is being deployed is useful for astroparticle physics. And uh, I'm proud because uh, we were just interacting in order to get uh, some resources more for uh, data analysis of AMS for free, just through this kind of in, uh, infrastructure services. And uh, OK, this is again uh, the, the clouds. I, I will not go to the details since we are running out of time, but uh, I am, or whoever, will be the happy end user because you have uh, some uh, templates uh, that will help you to just uh, wrap your code, wrap your necessity, and just uh, to get a transparent, not only Dropbox uh, or Google uh, Documents uh, service, but uh, let's say really the full chain, essentially uh, modular, that can be used not only for data exploitation, but also for a web portal to use a batch system to, to, to look for more data. And uh, you can have different uh, access to the data at different levels, uh, and this is all free, no lock-in. So you will not pa have to pay any license to anybody. The, the principle is that you will have tools in order to wrap your code under your necessity. And uh, one of the nice features uh, is the fact that you can uh, enter in this loop with and uh, uh, handle different authentication system. I mean, when I was speaking with the people, they were really proud they could <laughs> do dockers on Chineca. I mean, it's nothing. For me, it was meaning nothing. That means that you can run an application that would need uh, um, system uh, manager privilege on the Chineca system but they could envelop this such to run it. So uh, they were really. And uh, this has impact on normal life. Like Open city platform. <laughs> this is uh, used uh, the same uh, approach to share data in public administration. This is under uh, development and, and uh, is a funded project. Final remarks. Open universe should mean also open communities because what I've seen from uh, not being uh, neither an astronomer neither observation of the Earth, but just a, a humble uh, cosmic ray physicist. I, I've seen that several communities have different interests, but don't speak each other quite often. Um, so I think the cross-fertilization between different communities is, uh, could help uh, also in setting uh, a standard for it open. But we should preserve anyhow the different standard and different characteristics for uh, different communities. Open access and preservation is uh, an investment in its own uh, and should be financed accordingly. Sorry, but uh, when we um, use $2 billion uh, to build an experiment, we don't, it's a hardware and this means it costs the hardware. But then we are not financed $2 billion in order to open the data. If they would finance us, we would do it. And um, open software, this is the other keyword. A solution that is based on uh, not open software will be always not open. Because uh, if you don't have the money to pay Microsoft or uh, Apple or uh, whatever license, then you will be stuck. Open data, the last point that was also introduced, uh, what <laughs> open data for what purpose and when, when they're understood. We don't want to release uh, low quality data. So we should put always, uh, uh, we should always have this in mind because the taxpayer needs data, but the data should be of high quality. Thanks for the organizer, to the organizer for the meeting, to you for uh, delaying the lunch. And uh, okay, the thanks to the people that really gave the slides and did the work. I suggest that since we ran completely out of time, uh, if you have pressing questions, you ask Bruno at lunch. And we resume here uh, for uh, Professor Battiston address at uh, quarter past two. So it's going to be a short lunch as well. Uh,
Please be on time. Thank you.